Hello students, in this unit we will discuss about uh, levels of channel, channel structure, gaps, channel power and the conflict. What are different distribution channels? See, we are having different type of uh, distribution channels with us. Broadly, we can categorize into intensive, selective and exclusive. When designing a distribution channel, companies often segment their target market and align different levels of channels to cater to the specific needs and preferences of each segment. This approach ensures that the distribution strategy is tailored to effectively reach and serve different customer group. So let's explore one by one. Number one, we have intensive distribution. Intensive uh, means, you know, uh, to make the product available in as many outlets as possible. Say for example, FMCG. All FMCG goods, consumer goods, fast moving consumer goods, uh, the, you know, Unilever, Procter & Gamble, all FMCG companies, they are using intensive distribution. This approach is very suitable when we are having high demand and low involvement, such as convenience goods. So intensive distribution rely on extensive retail network, supermarket, convenience store, online marketplaces. It focused on widespread availability and accessibility to capture a large market share. Second, we have selective distribution. Selective distribution involve working with a limited number of retailers. This approach is very common for the product which requires specialized knowledge, a certain level of service or have specific target segment. Selective ensure that the product is available in outlets that align with the brand positioning and customer expectations. For example, shopping goods, clothing, apparel, designer store, furniture. In all these designer watches, so for all these type of products, we are having selective distribution. Exclusive. Next is exclusive. Uh, exclusive grant exclusive right to a single retailer or distributor to sell a product in a specific geographic area or market segment. This strategy is often used for premium or luxury goods where exclusivity and brand positioning are very, very important. Exclusive allow for personalized service, customized merchandising, which always enhances the customer experience. Then we have dual distribution. Dual involve using both direct and indirect. This strategy allow companies to reach to a broader customer base and leverage the benefits of different distribution channels. For example, a company may sell the product through company owned outlet or they also partner with the wholesalers or online marketplaces like Amazon. Uh, next, we have reverse distribution. Reverse means the movement of goods from the customer back to the producers. This occurs in scenarios such as the return, recycling or the product recalls. Companies need to design efficient reverse distribution channel to handle these processes very effectively. So it is very important for companies to carefully analyze the target market, product characteristics and customer preferences to determine the appropriate level of channel segmentation. This analysis helps companies identify the most effective distribution strategy that align with other overall marketing objectives and provide a competitive advantage. Now let's discuss the channel structure. The channel structure refers to the arrangement of the various entities involved in the distribution process including producers, intermediaries, distributors, wholesalers, retailers and end customers. The structure can vary depending on the nature of the product, target market and overall distribution strategy. So let's examine some very common channel structures here. Number one, the basic old traditional structure we have producer, distributor, retailer and customer. This is commonly found in many industries. In this structure, producers sell the product to distributor who in return, who in turn sell them to the retailers. Retailer then sell to end customers. Then we have producer, agent, wholesaler, retailer, customer. In this, producers work with the agent who represent them in the market. Agent facilitate the sale of goods to wholesalers who then distribute to retailers and then retailers finally sending to the end consumers. 
This structure is often used in industries where producers have limited resources or expertise to handle their direct distribution. Product retailer customer. This structure direct uh, distribution from the producer to the retailers who then sell to the customers. Then we have a very direct system here producer to consumer with the advancement in technology and the rise of e-commerce. Some companies choose to bypass the tra traditional intermediaries and they sell directly to consumers. This uh, structure eliminates the need of intermediaries allowing companies to have a closer relationship with the customers, uh, gather valuable customer data and exercise more control over the entire distribution process. So the choice of channel depends on what factor. There are many factors which are you know affecting the choice of distribution channel like product characteristics, what is the target market, how much costing we are occurring, control requirements, competitive dynamics, all these matter. Companies need to carefully evaluate these sectors and design a channel structure that ensure effective distribution, meet expectation and align with the overall distribution strategy. Now next we will discuss in this uh, session channel gaps. What are the channel gap? Gap Q hota hai? What is the channel power and how conflict arises? Channel gap refers to the discrepancies or misalignment that can occur between different entities in the distribution channel. These gaps can lead to inefficiencies, communication breakdowns and customer dissatisfaction like spatial gap. Spatial occurs when there is a geographical distance or physical separation between the producer, intermediary and end customer. This gap can lead to delay in product delivery, increased transportation cost and challenges in coordinating distribution activities. Then we have temporal gap. Temporal refers to the difference in timing between the production and consumption of a product. It can occur when there are delays in replenishing stock or when customers have to wait for the availability of a product. Minimizing the temporal gap is very crucial to meet the customer demand and maintain customer satisfaction. Assortment gap. Assortment gap occurs when there is a mismatch between the product offered by the producer and the product demanded by the customer. It can happen when retailers or distributors fail to stock the desired range of goods leading to lost sale opportunity and customer dissatisfaction. Next is communication gap arises when there is a lack of effective communication and information sharing among channel members. It can result in misunderstanding, misinformation and coordination challenges. Effective communication channel and feedback mechanism are essential to bridge the gap and ensure smooth, smooth channel operations. Channel power. Channel power refers to the ability of a channel member to influence and control the behavior of other channel member. Power dynamics can vary within a distribution channel and understanding managing channel power is crucial for maintaining healthy productive channel relationships. Let's explore some sources of channel power. Number one is coercive. Coercive power arises from the ability to impose penalties, punishment on other channel members. Say for example, a manufacturer may threaten to terminate a distributor because they do not comply with certain terms and conditions. Coercive power can be effective in enforcing compliance but can also strain relationship if misused. Another one is reward power. Reward is derived from the ability to provide incentive or reward to the channel member. For example, a manufacturer may offer a higher profit margin or bonus to the retailer who are achieving certain sales target. <coughs> then we have legitimate power. Legitimate is based on the formal position or authority within the channel. For example, the manufacturer holds legitimate power over distributors by the virtue of their contractual agreement. Legitimate power is derived from the rights and obligations defined in the contract. Referent power is based on admiration, respect, trust that can channel member hold for the another. It is built on relationship, reputation, trustworthiness. Channel members who are well respected and trusted can exercise referent power to influence the action of others. 
general conflict conflict refers to the disagreement dispute or tension that arises among channel members conflict can occur due to differences in goals interest expectations and power dynamics while channel conflict can be detrimental to the overall channel performance it can also be an opportunity for positive change and improvement let's explore some common sources of conflict number 1 goal conflict goal conflict occurs when different channel members have divergent objective or priority say uh, a manufacturer may focus on maximizing sale and market share while retailers may prioritize profitability and customer satisfaction so misalignment of goals can lead to conflict role conflict arises when the expectation and responsibilities of different channel members clash it can occur when there is ambiguity or overlap in the role and functions of the channel participant clear delineation of roles and effective communication can help mitigate role conflict resource conflict arises when there is a competition or scarcity of resources this can include dispute over the margin access to the support or availability of inventory fair allocation of resources and transparent processes can help alleviate resource conflict then we have perceptual conflict it occurs when channel members have different perception or interpretations of the market conditions need performance metrics these differences can lead to some misunderstandings or conflict if not addressed through open communication and shared understanding power conflict arises when there are imbalances in the channel power or when one channel member misuses their power to exploit others power struggle can lead to tension and conflict that hinder effective channel operation channel cooperation sorry open dialogue and negotiation can help resolve power conflict and establish equitable power dynamics so to conclude here we have to focus on you know the channel management there should be less gaps there should be less conflict so we have to manage channel gaps power dynamics and conflict and it all requires effective channel management strategies and open communication among the channel members collaborative decision making conflict resolution mechanism shared goals and incentive can help foster positive channel relationship and enhance overall channel performance thank you very much